Hey there, this is Kristen Kiefer, and you are listening to episode number seven of the Well Storied Podcast. Do you love writing opening lines? How about reading them? I happen to be a huge fan of both. I find opening lines to be incredibly captivating. When well done, they immediately pull me into a story. And when an author continuously writes great opening lines for each of the subsequent chapters in the book, I've been known to stay up far too late into the night to finish them. I've always been a very curious person, and so my love for reading a good opening line quickly led me to want to dissect what lay at the foundations of them. How can we, as writers, create great opening lines too? Is there a formula behind the beast? I spent a lot of time researching this topic and probably even more time trying to perfect the opening lines in my own stories. In fact, I dove in so deep that random intriguing lines often come to me now while I'm taking a long walk or a shower, anytime I try to give my brain a rest. And then I'll have to whip out my phone to capture the snippet before I lose it forever. Strangely enough, many of these inspirations have made it into my stories today, including lines such as, She had heard the night sky called a graveyard, where old lights go to die, but it wasn't true. And, They hung him at noon in the city square. And, the air was ripe with the dawn of spring, and the city was ripening with it. Keeping your mind open to inspirations and taking note when they come your way is one of the easiest ways to watch your creativity flourish. But that's not exactly what we're going to talk about today. Instead, we're going to dive deep into the heart of my research on opening lines and learn how we, too, as writers, can create them. Today's episode is a part of the Well Storied Podcast Archived series, where we dive deep into the well-storied blog archives to share some of my favorite writing tips and tricks with you. Today's episode is entitled How to Write Strong Opening Lines, and it was first published on my blog on March 31st, 2017. You can catch the full transcript of this episode at well-storied.com. Whether you are writing the first line of your book or simply starting a new chapter, Opening lines are tough. In the span of just a sentence or two, you must convince readers that your story is worth their time. Scary, right? Opening lines are your bargaining chips, your siren songs, and your bait. And if you don't master them, you risk turning readers away. So how can we keep that from happening? By hooking readers in, of course. And by hooking readers, we're talking about captivating them so wholly in the span of just a few short lines that they won't be able to put your book down. It's tricky business, but here's a bit of good news. By analyzing popular opening lines from literature, you can get a much better feel for how to go about writing your own. So let's jump in. How to captivate your readers. In prepping to write this blog post, I began thinking about the different reasons why an opening line might captivate a reader. And though this is by no means an exhaustive list, I did boil it down to four main key points. An opening line may pique your reader's interest, create an emotional connection, provide entertainment, which is most often via humor, or it has shock value. Most opening lines, be they for an individual chapter or for the book as a whole, seek to rouse readers' curiosity by planting questions in their minds. Take these lines for example. Kel wore a very peculiar coat, which is from A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Or, it was a bright cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13, which is from 1984 by George Orwell. Or we have, first the colors, then the humans. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try, which is from The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. These opening lines ask questions like, why is the coat peculiar? And striking 13? How is that possible? And wait, is this narrator not human? What's going on here? But sometimes opening lines do more than pique curiosity. They can also entertain via humor or add a measure of shock or speak to a certain readers to certain readers on an emotional level. Take these additional lines for example. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife, which is of course from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. We also have Lolita, Light of My Life, Fire of My Loins, which is from Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. 
And then we also have late in the winter of my 17th year, my mother decided I was depressed, presumably because I rarely left the house, spent quite a lot of time in bed, read the same book over and over, ate infrequently, and devoted quite a bit of my abundant free time to thinking about death. Which is from The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. While curiosity is key, making an additional effort to further captivate readers isn't such a bad way to open a chapter, is it? But how can you begin creating your very own opening lines? You can begin by setting the mood. Mood is the vibe you'd like readers to feel when reading your book. This is also called atmosphere. When it comes to choosing the opening line of your book, consider the general mood you want to convey throughout your story. Is it hope, struggle, whimsy, terror, gloom, nostalgia, adventure, peace, romance, or something else entirely? Try to pin down your story's mood to just one descriptor, then keep this in mind as you move into the next section of today's episode. But keep in mind that not every chapter in your book will stick to your story's general mood. A horror book may have humorous scenes, a romance novel may feature a character's serious struggle, a lighthearted adventure may have moments of gloom, and so on. So rather than considering your story's atmosphere as a whole when writing the first lines of individual chapters, consider instead what type of mood you'd like to set for that chapter in particular. Make sense? One more thing to note is that when it comes to opening lines of individual chapters in your book, you don't necessarily have to pose a question every single time. Sometimes it's enough to simply set the mood, then move into a new and intriguing scene that poses questions of its own. For example, from A Gathering of Shadows, Chapter 5 by V. E. Schwab. The city looked positively bleak, shrouded in the dying light, as if everything had been painted over with only black and white, an entire palette dampened to shades of gray. See how this chapter opener doesn't necessarily pose a question, but merely sets a bleak mood for the scene? Though not universal, this technique tends to be used most often when characters are moving to a new setting at the beginning of a chapter. Got it? Now let's move on to the next element we need to consider when writing opening lines. Adding purpose to the page. Everything in your novel must serve a purpose. If you've been hanging around well-storied since long before it became well-storied, then you're probably sick of that saying. But hey, it's true, and it applies to your opening lines as well. You've nailed down the mood you'd like to set, but to get to the bottom of what the question you pose in your opening line will be about, you must think about its purpose. Specifically, what will you introduce? After all, that is what opening lines are all about, right? Introducing something new to your readers. That something may be a character, such as, there was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it, which is from The Voyage of the Dawn Dreader by C.S. Lewis. Or you may introduce a thought or a feeling, such as, In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since, which is from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. You may introduce an action. The shutters swinging in the storm winds were the only sign of her entry, which is from Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Maz. Or how about a setting? Ironically, since the attacks, the sunsets have been glorious which is from Angel Fall by Susan A. Or perhaps you're introducing world-building context. There is one mirror in my house. It is behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. Our faction allows me to stand in front of it on the second day of every third month, the day my mother cuts my hair, which is from Divergent by Veronica Roth. You can also introduce multiple elements in your opening lines, such as these examples do. Not for the first time, an argument had broken out over breakfast at number four Privet Drive, which is from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Many years later, as he faced the firing squad, Colonel Aureliano Buendia was to remember that distant afternoon when his father took him to discover ice, which is from 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. In my earliest memory, my grandfather is bald as a stone and he takes me to see the tigers which is from The Tiger's Wife by Thea Obret. How do you choose which elements to feature in your opening line? I suggest first writing the entire scene. You won't know what's most important to feature unless you have context, and writing the scene will give you just that. Framing your opening line. At this point, you should have a general understanding of what you want to captivate readers with, 
and what mood you need to convey in order to set the scene. Now it's time to start playing around with your opening line. First, consider how you may frame it. Generally speaking, most opening lines fall into one of three frameworks. Either they open with dialogue, such as, I've watched through his eyes, I've listened through his ears, and I'll tell you he's the one, which is from Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Or it may open with action, such as, when he grabs Mama's wrist and yanks her toward that wall hanging like that, it must hurt, which is from Bitter Blue by Christine Cashore. Or it may open with a statement. The way I figure it, everyone gets a miracle, which is from Paper Towns by John Green. All three ways to frame your opening lines are perfectly good choices, so don't stress about choosing the right one. You may even want to begin creating different versions of your opening line using all three frameworks to get a feel for what works best for your novel or chapter. Writing opening lines is, in many ways, an art form. A little bit of practice can go a long way, but for the most part it can't exactly be taught. What I've hopefully done for you today is simply analyze how opening chapters are often put together so you can begin brainstorming ideas for your own. So what are you waiting for? Let opening line playtime begin. I'm Kristen Kiefer, and thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the well Storied Podcast Archive. Remember that you can check out the transcript for this podcast episode anytime at well-storied.com. And I will see you next week. Bye!